بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اركعوا واسجدوا واعبدوا ربكم وافعلوا الخير لعلكم تفلحون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اعلموا أخوة الإيمان أن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة في الدين ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد all praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord. Peace and blessing be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the facts about our deen is that our deen is the deen of opportunities. Two months ago, a great opportunity, the month of Ramadan, left us. Tomorrow, inshallah, we will be in another great opportunity. What I'm talking about is the month of the Hijjah. When we talk about the month of the Hijjah, it's the month that takes place in the end of that Islamic Hijri calendar. So it's the 12th month of the Islamic Hijri calendar. When we talk about the month of the Hijjah, always we emphasize in the first 10 days of it. Why? Because it has the day of Arab, the best day of the whole year. If the first 10 days of the Hijjah does not have anything except the day of Arab, that good enough to make the righteous deeds, the ibadat, the ta'at, highly promoted in this time. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about these first 10 days of the Hijjah, مَا مِنْ أَيَّامٍ الْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ فِيهِنَّ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْهُ فِي هَذِهِ الْأَيَّامِ الْعَشْرِ There is no a good deed more beloved to Allah than a good deed that's done in these 10 days. Allahu Akbar. So these 10 days, starting tomorrow, are the best time to worship Allah Azza wa Jalla. Due to that, the scholars has argued which is better, which is greater, the last 10 days of Ramadan or the, la or the first 10 days of the Hijjah. Some of them say the last 10 days of Ramadan are better, and some say the first 10 days of the Hijjah are better. But the truth about it is that the night time portion of the last 10 days of Ramadan are better than the night time portion of the first 10 days of the Hijjah. Why? Because the night time portion of Ramadan, the last 10 days of Ramadan has Sayyidat Al-Qadr, the greatest night throughout the whole year. But when we talk about the daytime portion, so the daytime portion of the first 10 days of the Hijjah are better than the daytime portion of the last 10 days of Ramadan. Why? Because the daytime portion of the first 10 days of the Hijjah has the day of Arafah, the best day of the whole year, the night of the Hijjah. It is going to fall in this year in the 11th of uh, the 11th of September, meaning that the following Sunday, Bismillah. That the day of Arafah. So because of that, the scholars say the daytime portion of the first 10 days of the Hijjah are better. This comparison, the reason for doing it is not to favor the Hijjah over Ramadan or to favor Ramadan over the Hijjah. That's not the point. The point is to be believing in the greatness, in the virtue of the Hijjah just the same way we believe in the virtue and the greatness of Ramadan. And Imam Al-Hafid ibn Hajar, the author of the book Fath al-Bari, the book that takes care of the explanation of the Sahih al-Bukhari. He said, the reason why these first 10 days of the Hijjah are great is that because they have Ummahat al-Ibadah, the major Ibadah, the major righteous deeds. We have the Salat, which is one of the pillar of Islam. It's performed in the first 10 days of Ramadan, the, in the first 10 days of the Hijjah. And also we have fasting. We are highly recommended to fast them, excluding the 10th of the Hijjah, which is the day of Al Eid, which is going to fall in this year, inshallah, in the 12th of September. So we are highly recommended to fast it. 
So we have another pillar of Islam taking place in this first 10 days of the Hijjah. And also we have the Hajj, the pilgrimage, taking place also in this first 10 days of the Hijjah. No any other time during the year has these three pillars together except the first 10 days of the Hijjah. Allah Akbar. So the same way we get ready, prepared and excited for Ramadan, we must get ready, prepared and excited for the first 10 days of the Hijjah. We have to get ready for that. How we, how we get ready? By repentance, tawbah, returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, purifying yourself, cleaning yourself. Because sins make you heavy and make you so slow in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be clean and be light to be fast, to be faster in the act of worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have to, we have to understand something that in our deen, the basis for, for, for any success, the basis for the success is the tawbah, the repentance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jalla says, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Repent to Allah, all of you who believe, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So you may succeed. So that's the basis for, success, for, for the success in our deen. To purify yourself, to be clean. And that tawbah, that repentance requires to be serious. You must be serious. Being clean and not being serious, that will not change anything. You have to be serious, you have to be eager to do more righteous deeds and do more ibadah and do more ba'at. Whenever you get serious, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is supporting you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا Those who strive in us. Meaning that in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They work hard and strive hard and are serious for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's going to happen to them? We will guide them to our path. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is supporting you. You may be puzzled. What type of worship and what type of righteous deeds should I be doing in the first 10 days of the Hijjah? In Ramadan, we are focusing more in the fasting, the night prayer, and reading Quran. Should I do the same thing or should I do something different? What I can tell you is do as many righteous deeds as you can. Do as many as you can, but focus on the major ones. Focus on the major ones. Focus on al Hajj. The, the whole entire month is given the name of al Hajj. If you're not making the Hajj this year, make the plan to be among those who are doing it next year or the following year. If you are blessed and you're going for the Hajj, for the Hajj this year, take advantage of these first 10 days and you do Al-Umrah for multiple times, for multiple times. Fasting, Ya Ikhwani, Wa Akhawati. The fasting, a soul, is one of the greatest worship, one of the major righteous deeds in our deen, and it's a pillar in our deen. It should take place in these first 10 days. We should fast them all, except the 10th, which is the day of Al-Eid, as we know that it's not allowed to be fasted that day. If you cannot do them all, you cannot do it from the first to the ninth, do as many as you can. Do as many as you can. Let the fasting remind you of Ramadan. Let the fasting remind you of the atmosphere of Ramadan. Let the fasting remind you of your belief in Ramadan, how you were strong in your belief and how you were strong in your worship for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As salah, the prayer. The first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be asking you about in the hereafter, be on time in your prayer in these, for, in, these, in these 10 days. Be on time in your prayer, in prayer and congregation with Muslims, with the believers in the masjid. We want the masjid, my dear brothers, to be full as it was in Ramadan. We want the masjid to be full in Salatul Fajr as it was in Ramadan. We want it to be full in Salatul Isha as it was in Ramadan. We want to see ourselves after the Salat in these 10 days sitting and reading the Quran as we were in Ramadan. What's the difference between Ramadan and the first 10 days of the Hijjah? There's no any difference. This is the main point of this Quran. To understand and to believe in the virtue and the greatness of the first 10 days of the Hijjah. Same thing as Ramadan. The month of Ramadan is a brother for the month of the Hijjah. There's no any difference. It's a great opportunity in your hand. Take advantage of it. You don't know what's going to happen to you next year. You may be dead. Or you may, may not be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take advantage of it. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
says about these first ten days, proving their greatness, improving their virtue. He says, that the sign for these days increase at tahleel say la ilaha illallah and increase at tahmeed say alhamdulillah and increase at takbir increase at takbir say allahu akbar in the masjid in your workplace at home in the marketplace anywhere because they are great days and there is no any difference between them and ramadan so why we are treating them differently why we are mistreating the month of the hijjah why we treat Ramadan better? We do not treat the month of the Hijjah in the same way. Do we have any proof, any hadith from the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, or any verse in the Quran showing that the month of the Hijjah is less than the month of Ramadan? All what we have from the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and all what we have from the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is proof, proven that the month of the Hijjah is a great month and is a great season for the worship. On the day, on the day of Al Eid, on the 10th of the Hijjah, which is going to be the 12th of September this year, the following Monday, be among those who are pious, those who are pious people, those who revive the rituals of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I'm talking about is Al Uthiyya, the sacrifice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His book mentions the sacrifice, the slaughtering Al Uthiyya, slaughtering sheep after the Salat. And we know the importance of the Salat. And we know the obligation of the salat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَوْ Pray to your Lord in slaughter. Slaughter sheep. Just the same way that the salat is important, <coughs> the sacrifice is also important. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says another verse, وَإِنَّ صَلَاتِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَاءِ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Say, O Muhammad, verily, my prayer, in my sacrifice, the slaughtering, in my living and dying is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the sacrifice is mentioned right after the salat. Do not miss fasting the night of the Hijjah, the day of Arafah, the 11th of September, the following Sunday, bismillah. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about fasting, about fasting it, أحتسب على الله أن يكفر السنة التي قبله والسنة التي بعده. It erases and forgives the sins that were committed in the past year. It also does the same thing for the sins that end up next year. The day of Arafah is the best day of the whole year. It's the day that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about ما من يوم من أن يعتق الله فيه عبد من النار من يوم عرفة. There is no day that Allah subhanahu wa taala frees in. A freeze and saves a slave from the hellfire like the day of Arafah. That's the day to get your ticket or to get your protection and your warranty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against hellfire. If you worship him properly and if you were so strong in your belief. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about the day of Arafah, خير الدعاء دعاء وعرفة the best دعاء the best supplication the best prayer is the prayer of the day of عرفة is the day of عرفة so that the day that you want to take advantage of it from the first second of it all the way to the last second from صلاة الفجر all the way to صلاة المغرب and alhamdulillah it's gonna fall in on Sunday which is a day that a lot of people do not work take advantage of it spend more time in the masjid let everything come out of you in words as prayers and supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever you wish, whatever you want to happen, whatever you dream of, that day is the day that you supplicate and you ask your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, I want to let you know that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا دَخَلَتِ الْعَشْرُ وَأَرَادَ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يُضَحِّي فَلْيُمْسِكْ عَنْ شَعْرِهِ وَأَطْفَارِهِ when the 10 days come, the 10 days of the Hijjah come, and one of you is planning and intending to do a Lughiyah, the sacrifice, so he should, not, he, he should not cut or shave his hair, nor cut his nail. So today is the last day for whoever wants to shave, or whoever wants to cut. From tomorrow all the way to the moment you slaughter your Uthiyah, you cannot cut your nail, you cannot shave, uh, nor cut your hair. And that only applies to the person who is doing the sacrifice. The person who is doing the, 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 the person who is doing the sacrifice. If it's you doing the sacrifice, so that applies to you. It's not applied to your wife nor to your children. It only applies to the person who is doing the sacrifice. <laughs>
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين حديثنا في هذه الخطبة هو عن موسم عظيم من مواسم الطاعات الحج شهر ذي الحجة وعندما نتكلم عن شهر ذي الحجة نتكلم عن العشر الأولى من ذي الحجة لأن الله تبارك لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ما من أيام العمل الصالح فيهن أحب إلى الله منه في هذه الأيام العشر فهو أفضل موسم لعبادة الله سبحانه وتعالى ومن هنا اختلف العلماء أيهما أفضل عشر رمضان العشر الأخيرة من رمضان أم العشر الأولى من ذي الحجة لكن الراجح في المسألة أن الأيام أي الأيام من عشر ذي الحجة أفضل نهار نهار العشر من ذي الحجة أفضل من نهار العشر الأخيرة من رمضان لأن فيها يوم عرفة وليالي عشر رمضان أفضل من ليالي عشر ذي الحجة لأن في ليالي عشر رمضان ليلة القدر التي هي خير من ألف شهر فعلى هذا يا إخواني هذا الموسم موسم عظيم من مواسم الطاعات كما أننا نستعد لرمضان وكما أننا يقوى إيماننا في رمضان وكما أن المسجد يكون مليء في رمضان فينبغي أن يكون المسجد مكتظا ومهترئا بالمصلين في هذا الموسم العظيم الذي سيبدأ يوم غد بإذن المولى عز وجل سيبدأ يوم غد لا فرق بين رمضان وبين ذي الحجة وهذا أهم أمر أريد أن أركز عليه في هذه الخطبة استشعار عظمة هذه العشر والإيمان بفضلها كما نؤمن بفضل رمضان فليس عندنا دليل في الكتاب ولا في السنة يقلل من شأن ذي الحجة ليس هناك دليل يقلل من شأن ذي الحجة ما من دليل يتكلم عنها إلا وهو يتكلم عن فضلها وعن عظمها يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عنها فأكثر فيهن من التهليل والتحميد والتكذيب هذا شعارها هذا ما ينبغي أن نكون عليه ذكر لله سبحانه وتعالى وعبادة لله سبحانه وتعالى ولم يذكر ذلك في رمضان وهذا ليس تقليل من شأن رمضان رمضان والحج هم سواء شهر الحجة وشهر رمضان هم سواء فكما اغتنمنا رمضان ينبغي أن نغتنم شهر الحجة وأن نعبد الله سبحانه وتعالى حق عباده كما كان المسجد مكتظا في صلاة الفجر في رمضان فينبغي أن يكون مكتظا في صلاة الفجر في هذه العشر وكما كان المسجد مكتظا بالمصلين في صلاة العشاء فينبغي أن يكون مكتظا بالمصلين في هذه العشر وكما كنا نجلس في المسجد ونقرأ القرآن فينبغي لنا أن نجلس في هذه العشر ونعبد الله سبحانه وتعالى حق عبادته ركز في هذه العشر على أمهات العبادات إن كنت ممن ستذهب إلى الحج فالحمد لله وإن كنت ممن لم يقدر الله لك الذهاب في هذه السنة فنوي, فنوي الذهاب السنة القابلة بإذن الله واغتنم وقتك في مكة بأداء العمرة واغتنم وقتك في هذه العشر سواء كنت في الحج أو كنت هنا في بلدك استغل هذا الوقت بالصيام الذي هو من أفضل العبادات يقول الله تبارك وتعالى عنه في الحديث القدسي كل عمل آدم له إلا الصوم كل عمل يعمله له كل عمل يعمله له أجر معين محدد له إلا الصوم فإنه لي اختص الله بأجره وأنا أجزي به والله سبحانه وتعالى أكرم الأكرمين إذا جاز جاز جزاء أكرم الأكرمين ولا يساوي جزاء الله ولا يساوي جزاء أحد جزاء الله سبحانه وتعالى فجزاء الله أعظم جزاء وجزاء الله أكرم جزاء فينبغي أن نعلم هذه فينبغي أن نعلم فضيلة هذه العشر وأن نعمل لها وأن نستعد لها بالتوبة إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى توبة النصوح وأن نكون جادين فيها يقول النبي يقول الله تبارك وتعالى والذين جاهدوا فينا جاهدوا وسعوا وكانوا جادين في أمرهم لنهدينهم سبلنا الله سبحانه وتعالى يهديهم الله سبحانه وتعالى يعضدهم الله سبحانه وتعالى يكون معه في, في جميع أمورهم فكونوا جادين وتوبوا إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى وصوموا يوم عرفة الذي قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن صيامه أحتسب على الله أن يكفر السنة التي قبله والسنة التي بعده كن من الخاضعين المتضرعين في يوم عرفة إن كان لك رجاء وإن كان لك أمل وإن كان لك أمر ترجو حصوله فموعد الانطلاق يوم عرفة يوم عرفة الحادي عشر من سبتمبر الأحد بعد القادم فادع الله سبحانه وتعالى بما تشاء اجعل أمينك وحنينك وبكاءك يظهر في دعائك في يوم عرفة 
فخير الدعاء كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم دعاء يوم عرفه الا صلوا وسلموا رحمكم الله على ازكى البشريه وخير البريه نبينا محمد النبي الكريم فقد امركم الله بامر بدا بنفسه وثنى بملائكه القدس وثلث بكم ايها المؤمنون فقال عز من قائل عليما ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وانعم على نبينا محمد وعلى ال بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الابرار وارض اللهم عن خلفائه الاربعه ابي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابه اجمعين وعنا معهم بعفوك وجودك وكرمك برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا واكرم نزلنا واوسع مدخلنا ويسر الله امورنا اللهم اختم لنا بالصالحات اجالنا اللهم نور لنا في قبولنا اللهم تقي موازيننا اللهم ادخلنا الجنه من اول وهله اللهم اجعل مقامنا فيها في اعلى علمه مع النبي 